Welcome back everyone to Learning by Teaching, we're in statics and today we're going to solve problem 10.29, okay? It says, determine the centroidal y location which locates the centroidal axis x prime for the cross-sectional area of the T beam and then find the moments of inertia i sub x of prime and the moment of inertia with respect to the y prime axis, okay? So basically what the problem is telling us, hey, you first need to find this value of our centroidal y location, okay? And how do we find this? So in order to find this y centroidal location, what we need to do is that we need to know the summatory of all the centroidal locations multiplied by the area of each of my parts, and we're going to divide it by the summatory of our areas of each of our parts. And by parts, I mean that we have a composite beam and we can separate this beam into two parts. We can have this first rectangle, okay, that we're going to call it one. And then we have this second rectangle in here. And this is going to be our second rectangle, right? So in order to know this summatory, we're going to create a table, a small table, where first we're going to put the number of the part, then we're going to find the area of this part. We're going to say, hey, where is the centroidal location of that rectangle? And then after that, all we need to do is multiply the centroidal location, multiply by the area, okay? So we're going to have part one, we're going to have part two, and then at the end, we're going to have our summatory for our equation, okay? For our fraction equation. So let's start with our first part. So we know that our first part or our first rectangle is this one and we want to know the area. Well, we have the base is equal to this, which is 150 millimeters and the height is equal to 20 millimeters. So if we plug that into our calculator, we get 150 times 20. We get that this is equal to 3,000 millimeters cube, okay? Now, the centroidal location of this part should be around in here, which should be halfway of this 20 millimeters. So, we should have that the distance is going to be equal to 10 millimeters. Now, what we can do is that we're going to add this centroidal, we're going to multiply, I'm sorry, the centroidal location with the area and we will end up with 30,000 millimeters cube. Okay, now what we can do is go for our second part. Now our second part looks something like this and our centroidal on our second part should be right in the middle of that square, in the middle of the base, in the middle of the height. Okay, now the area should be 150 multiply by 20 again because we got 150 here and 20 as our base okay so we will also have a 3000 millimeter cube for our area the, the y location of this rectangle it's in that second orange point that we draw in there right so we will have 20 millimeters from the first rectangle height and then we will have half of this 150 millimeters. So half of 150 should be 75 millimeters. So if we have 75 millimeters from here to here and we add these 20 millimeters we will end up with 95 millimeters. Okay. Now we're going to multiply this 3000 by 95 and we will end up with 28 285 thousands millimeters cube. And all we need to do now is add these areas and add this multiplication, okay? So we're going to add these areas and these areas added up should be equal to 6,000 millimeter cube. And then for the multiplication, we're going to add these two numbers together. So we got 30,000 plus the 285,000 will give me an equal of 315,000 millimeter cube okay now we can plug these numbers into our equation in here so we got that the summatory of 
our multiplication was equal to 315 thousandths millimeter cube and the summatory of only our areas is equal to six thousandths millimeter cube okay so we're going to do that and we end up that our y location should be in the 52.5 millimeter mark okay so this is our y location that we've just found out in here all right now that we know this what we need to do and find is our moment of inertia with respect to this x prime axis and these y prime axis okay so in order to do that we're going to find the moment of inertia out of each of our parts and then we're going to add them up okay so let's just start with part one our first rectangle and in order to find the moment of inertia in the x prime location what we have to find is the what we need to know is the prime location with respect to our regular x-axis and our regular x-axis will be depending on each of the centroidals of each part for example for my first one was here therefore the x location should be somewhere around here okay and for our second one should be somewhere around here so let's not forget about that now we need to since they are not since these centroidals are not landing exactly on our x prime axis what we need to do is that we're going to apply the parallel axis theorem okay and what the parallel axis theorem is says is that we need to add the area multiplied by the differential distance in this case the distance should be y because it's the difference between this axis and the axis of this centroidal in here is equal to a change in the y direction okay so and this change in the y direction should be square okay now what should be the moment of inertia of a rectangle if we go and look behind on our book we will realize that the difference the the moment of inertia of a rectangle is going to be equal to 1 over 12 multiplied by the base multiplied by the height cube and then we're just gonna add our parallel axis theorem okay so let's keep on working on this so we have 1 over 12 what is the base of this rectangle so we got we're working on our first rectangle so this one over here and we're looking at it with respect to the x-axis so the, the the base of this one should be 75 plus 75 that should be equal to 150 and the height as we already know it's equal to 20 millimeters so we got 20 we cube it we're gonna add plus now we need the area of this rectangle the area of this rectangle again should be equal to these 3000 millimeters so we already found it and we're going to multiply it by the distance dy with respect so the distance dy is going to go from my x-axis so this x prime axis so in here to here we already know what this y-axis is and we already know what's the central with of this uh, part a which is 10 millimeters so we will have 52.5 minus 10 because we have this is 52.5 and then we have that from here to here this is small this is small change from here to here is equal to 10 millimeters so the total distance from here to here should be that's 52 minus 10 that will give me 42.5 and we're going to square it okay so we're going to plug this into our calculator we got 1 over 12 multiplied by 150 20 cubed plus our 3000 multiplied by 42.5 and we're going to square this okay I'm not going to round up our numbers just to keep everything with uh, all the significant figures that we can so far and then in the final answer we can round them up okay so we just found the moment of inertia only for part one with respect to the x prime axis 
Now what we need to do is find for the part one, for our part number one, the moment of inertia with respect to the y-axis. Now the good thing is that our y prime axis is landing on top of our my centroidal for part one. Okay, that means that I don't have to do the parallel axis theorem, and I can just go on that for a rectangle. All I need is one over twelve my base multiplied by my height cube. Okay. Now, if we're looking with respect to my x axis, the my y axis, I'm sorry, like this, my base will be this 20 millimeters of that rectangle. So we'll have 20 millimeters, and the height will become the 150 cube. We're going to plug this into our calculator. So we got 1 over 12 multiplied by 20, multiplied by 150 cube, and this will be an equal of 5625 thousands and these units are millimeter cube millimeter to the four i'm sorry and we're done with part one now what we need to do is that we need to do part two okay so i'm going to copy this picture just so we have it down below and we don't have to keep scrolling up and we're going to do Again, for part two, we're going to find our moment of inertia with respect to the x prime axis. And we'll realize it's also 1 over 12, my base times height, cube, plus the parallel axis theorem. Why do I have to do the parallel axis theorem? Because my centroid dial for this location doesn't land exactly on the axis, okay? Since it doesn't land on the axis that we're looking on, we have to do this parallel axis here. And we have the area multiplied by the distance square. Okay. Now that we know this, what is if I'm looking at my x prime axis, the base of my part two rectangle, this one over here, should be this 20 millimeters. So we got that this is equal to 1 over 12. The base is 20 millimeters. The height then should be 150 cubed. And we're going to add the area. Now, if we go up a little bit for the table, we find out that the area for part two is equal to 30,000, to 3,000, I'm sorry. One, two, three. And then we got that the distance, well, now what is the distance of these x axis with respect to these x prime axis? So the distance will be, okay, let's first find the distance of this x axis should be 20 millimeters plus half of this 150, which is 75. Oh wait, but we already calculated this to be my Y location for part two. So this is 95 millimeters, okay? So we already knew this, um, how was the distance between here and here, but we need to subtract the distance from here to here, which is our 52.5 that we found for our centroidal Y location. And if we do 95 minus 52.5, that it was our y location, so we will end up with 42.5. And we're going to square this. Okay? So if we plug this into our calculator, we'll find out that we have 1 over 12 multiplied by 20 multiplied by 150 cubed plus 3,000 multiplied by 42.5 square, and we end up with 11043750 millimeters to the 4 power. Last, what we need to do is the moment of inertia with respect to the y prime axis. And here again, our y prime axis, this axis in here, crosses my centroidal of part 2. So knowing this, all we need to do is calculate 1 over 12, multiply by the base, multiply by the height cube, and the base, if we're looking at this y prime axis, there of this rectangle should be this long side, which is 150 millimeters. So we got 150, and then the height should be the 20 cube and then 
if we plug this into our calculator, we'll have 1 over 12 multiplied by 150 multiplied by 20 cube, and this is equal to 100,000 millimeters to the 4. We're almost done with the problem. All we have to do is now add them up. So the total for both parts, when for the composite T-beam, what we have to do is just add them up. So we're going to add our numbers that we got for our part one plus our part two of with respect to our moment of inertia with respect to the x-axis. So we're going to have this number. So let's copy it here. So we're going to have this number. This is our, I'm sorry, in the x. And then we're going to add what we found on part two, millimeters to the four. We need to add these two numbers up. So we will end up having a total of 16.56 times 10 to the 6 millimeter to the 4 power. And we just found out one of our answers. The second of our answers actually for this problem. And our third answer should be just the addition of our value that we got on the moment of inertia in the y location for part one, which is equal to this. And we're going to add what we got on the second part, which is the 100,000, so millimeters to the four. And we'll end up with a total of 5.725 times 10 to the 6 millimeter cube, okay? Okay, guys, so this is the answer for my problem. So our centroidal location, Y location is 52.5 millimeters. And for our moment of inertia in the X and Y prime axis is, or is this one, okay? Thank you guys for watching. If you guys liked the video, please push the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.